Okay, so I hope you guys are excited because we are gearing up for Casper to officially open up at the end of this month, April 29th. And so that means that many of you are figuring out what your stats are. And with respect to those stats, what are like the best stats will, that will help you get into PA school? And so I was asked the question about what my stats were that helped me get into PA school. And so that is what I'm gonna be answering in today's video. to my channel thank you so much for joining me today if you're new to my channel take a look around if you like what you see you like the vibe that I'm giving off go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can know exactly when I put a new video out but I wanted to answer this question it was posed to me by one of you all it was posed by Nicole Vincente and she said hi I'm not sure if you did a video of this yet but could you share your stats that got you into PA school thank you happy Easter by the way so, Nicole, no, I did not necessarily do a video like, oh, these are my stats. Uh, that's what I guess this video is. Uh, I've talked about my various different stats in other videos um, pertaining to various different things, but this video is, I guess, more concentrated. So I will definitely hit those stats for you. And I want to put a disclaimer, like, again, this is Adonis stats. You know, this is me. This is not like the end all be all. This is not like, oh, if you hit these benchmarks, you're gonna absolutely get into PA school because be mindful that there were people that got into PA school with stats way higher than mine. There are people that did not get into PA school with stats way higher than mine. And then the obvious opposite is in reverse as well. There are people that got into PA school with stats lower than mine and then PA, people that got into PA school or did not get into PA school with stats lower than mine as well. So this is just kind of my benchmark, but you can absolutely take it and look at it and see kind of maybe where you may fall and if there are things that you want to improve on go right ahead and do so, okay? So when it comes to your stats, there are about like five, three to five various different things that you wanna kind of focus in on. Those are like the tangible things that you can change and adjust as you're going through your application cycle. Now, obviously when I'm doing my consultation sessions, these are kind of the things that I hone in on because these are the areas that you can actually see movement and change, right? Uh, when we're talking about personal statement and stuff like that, obviously, yes, you can go ahead and adjust that. And I did my, I adjusted my personal statement, I don't know, like three or four times throughout this process. Um, and I think that I made it better, but the tangible things like the numbers that you can count, like your GRE score, your GPA, your shadowing hours and your direct patient care experience experience hours, those are the things that you want to kind of make those various different adjustments. So those are the things that I'm going to touch on. Okay. All right. So for me, I'm going to start with shadowing and for shadowing, I shadowed about 20 days at this one particular hospital. It was all mainly like surgical PAs that I was shadowing across different subspecialties. And I did this for 20 days from like August to October, various different days in those three months. And I had a total of about eight hours. And so for in in totality of my shadowing experience, I got 160 hours. Why did I get so many hours? Because I wanted to see all the various different subspecialties that I could see to get a very like kind of good idea of what I wanted to do with respect to like, oh, did I like OBGYN and C-sections or did I like vascular and them like doing um, BKAs or uh, AKAs, that kind of stuff, like below the knee amputations or above the knee amputations. That's kind of what I wanted to make sure that I had a good grasp on. And also that was the area that I kind of got in. And so like when it comes to shadowing, you get in where you fit in, okay? Right now, there's not a lot of like in-person shadowing. That's why, you know, um, websites like Get This University and other people on Instagram and things like that, we're doing like these online shadowing, um, I guess, symposiums for you all so that you can get an idea of what various different PAs do in different fields. But for me, I got into that hospital, so I ensured that I was in there. So 160 shadowing hours checked, that's what I wanted, and um, I felt like that was more than sufficient enough for, for me and where I was at. And I wanted a little bit more hours because I felt like, you know, maybe I was like lacking a little bit in some other areas. So I wanted to ensure like, hey, you know, like I did all of these hours and these healthcare hours and that kind of stuff. So now going on to my healthcare or my direct patient care experience hours or PCE. So for those, I had 1700 hours. 
Now, um, I had 1,700 hours, like, tangible, like, as a, you know, home health aide and then CNA. Um, there were some other hours, like, where I was literally just kind of, like, a sitter type of thing. Um, and for that, you know, schools didn't necessarily, like, look highly upon that. So I just kind of put them in my healthcare experience hours, but ensure that my 1700 hours that I had for direct patient care experience was like highlighted because I felt like that was like a lot. Obviously, I was in um, an A&P class with some other students that were trying to get into PA school and they had like 5,000 to 6,000 hours. Like they were working for years in, um, in healthcare, but specifically where they were getting direct hands-on patient care experience. And so I was like, oh man, like, I don't know if my 1700 hours is going to cut it, but it did. So again, case in point, don't necessarily take like what somebody else's hours and what their stats are to dictate how you're going to get into PA school. Okay. Um, my next thing I'll go to is my GPA. So for me, I wanted to boost my GPA. I told you guys that early on, like my overall GPA was like a 3.3 or something along, like, along the lines of that. My science GPA was like a 2.99 initially. Um, and so I took only pretty much science courses um, and got straight A's in all of them. And I was able to boost my GPA up to my overall GPA being a 3.54 um, and my science GPA was like a 3.3 around there, uh, like a little bit higher, maybe 3.31, but it was a 3.3. Um, and I remember those specifically because I was like, yes, finally, like I'm over the 3.0 mark. I'm well into the threes. I'm kind of right there on the average cusp. And so that for me was really like a extreme fet that I like, you know, accomplished because, um, ultimately I was like literally taking maybe like a whole year of school of undergrad all over again, uh, to boost those scores. And that is what I chose to do. I did not want to do like a post back. I did not necessarily want to do another master's. Um, I felt like it was a waste of time and a waste of the money that I didn't necessarily have. So I wanted to ensure that I can get these things done at my own pace, which I did most of these classes over summer school or in some type of like hybrid form. Um, because I had just had like a baby as well. So that is that. Um, ultimately the last and like, I guess it's not necessarily the most important, important, but GPA and GRE are, I think the two most important things that you want to, um, ensure that you're getting. And for me, my GRE score, which I already talked to you guys about was a 322. Now I studied hard. I did a lot, a lot of studying for that last month, like pushed myself, did it as it, if it was my job. And, um, you know, my scores reflected that, um, I have a GP, a GRE video that I talk about and it like kind of shows you exactly like the picture of my scores. So you guys can go check that video out. It talks about like how an average student can get a high GRE score. So if you're interested in that, go check that video out. But that was my score. There are people that got like 330s and got 305s and still got in. I think if you are like above a 300, you're kind of, you're sitting pretty decent. If you're above like a 310, 315 if you're in a 320s you're sitting very nice and I feel like that helped with my GPA not necessarily being like a 37 3839 um and you know my hours not being like 5000 4000 hours so those are my stats uh let's go over them again 160 hours of shadowing. I had um 1700 hours of direct patient care experience. I had an overall GPA PA of 3.5, a science GPA of 3.3, and a GRE score of 322. So those were Adana's stats. Um, hopefully, you know, you can do better than me and also get into PA school, but that's what I did. And hopefully it gives some of you guys comfort as well, because maybe your stats are higher than mine. Um, and if your stats are lower than mine, still hopefully it gives you comfort because there are people that get in with lower stats and you still have time to kind of make things improve, right? You're still in the spring semester. So there are still courses that you may be waiting for, and there's still lots of hours that you're still able to get. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for asking me this question, Nicole. I appreciate it. Guys, continue to leave me your comments in the comment section below because I read them and make videos out of them. So thank you so much for that. Um, if you haven't already done so, follow me on Instagram, edit on the PA and on Instagram at 
getthatcuniversity.com. Go ahead and like and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!